Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, all glory, all honor, all thanks to the Abinawa Yahweh, right? The Most High God. For yet another glorious, blessed moment to give y'all an enlightening breakdown, right? <clears throat> Concerning the gross darkness in the state of the world, right? So now, with that being said, I'm going to just jump straight into the lesson. And it's going to be the book of uh, Romans, right? Book of Romans, chapter 1 and verse 21, and it reads, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So, Salak, let me read it again. The book of Romans, chapter 1 and verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. So what they're saying is, there's men, women, and children who understood and knew the, uh, uh, who understood and knew how critical it was to, you understand, know your customs, know your heritage, right? Know who you are as a people. You understand, there were men, women, and children who knew, let me read it again, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Meaning what? They knew the Lord through their customs, through their heritage, through their traditions, right? But what it say, they glorified him not as God. Meaning what? They didn't want to serve their Lord. They didn't want to keep their heritage. They didn't want to keep their customs. They didn't want to keep their traditions. You understand, they turned from the righteous way, the righteous mannerism, to do what? Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. You understand? So, so that the Lord had given them a heritage. The Lord had given them a blessing. You understand? The Lord had given them land, possessions, things of that nature. The Lord had blessed them. They didn't regard it. You understand? it? They, they, what, what does the scripture say? Glorify him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination. So, you understand all they were magic imagine Salakia. their imagination was in vanity you understand they wasn't thankful for anything that the Lord had did for them set them up in their estate you understand only thing they worried about was what their imagination what the, what was going through their mind which was evil wicked thoughts right reading on <clears throat> and their foolish heart was darkened right we know when your heart's darkened like Pharaoh, the Lord darkened his heart, hardened his heart, you understand? That means there was nothing, you understand, to make you, there was nothing that was going to change your mind. You were stuck in your ways, you were set in your ways, you were that stiff neck and rebellious people. Right, verse 22. Profaning themselves, Salakia, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, you understand? Because they was trying to be too deep so to say right they was trying to be too deep trying to go in too hard you understand me when everything is plain you understand as for a human being for a man on earth everything is plain you don't have to get too deep you understand the lord already has everything figured out for you all you have to do is walk and let the coach you understand direct your steps the coach will be the lord the most high god you understand He's the director, he's the coach, he's the, he's the, you understand, he the plug, he everything. Right? Verse 23, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible men, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Meaning what? You were serving idols. You were serving things that have no power. Serving things of vanity, you understand? You exalted the image made by the uh, uh, the man, right? You you exhorted the image made by the man, meaning what you set up this image made by a man rather than worshiping the Lord who made the man that made the image, you understand? <clears throat> Read on. It's lucky. Right? Verse 24. Wherefore, the Most High also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts 
to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So what did it say? Verse 24, verse 4. The Most High also gave them up to uncleanness. You understand me? That's abominable works. Abominable works. The Lord said he gave you up to uncleanness. That's abominable works. You understand? Through the lust of their own heart. You understand me? So whatever you wanted to do, the Lord said, you know what? You like this abomination? After you know my laws, you know the law, statutes, and commandments. You know what's pleasing to me. You understand me? You know you're not supposed to eat pork, crab, shrimp, lobster. But you know what? It's in your mind to do so. You understand me? So I'm going to give you over to that. That's what the Lord said. You know you're supposed to You know you're supposed to be in order. You understand me? You know you're not supposed to you know, be acting like the heathen. Right? Trimming your ways to please men. To be a respected person. You know you're not supposed to be that type of guy. That type of woman. Right? But the Lord said what? Verse 24. I'm going to read it again. Book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to unclean, uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Right? You know you're not supposed to be a sodomite giving in to homosexuality, lesbianism, so forth and so on. Right? But the lie, but the Lord gave that up to you. You understand me? Because that was in your mind. That was in your heart. To do evil, you understand me? That lust after another woman, and you're a woman. To lust after another man, and you're a man. So the Lord gave you over to that. Right, verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever? Amen. So this is a rhetorical question. Right, verse 25, Romans chapter 1 and verse 25, and it reads, Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Who changed the truth of God into a lie? This world, this world, this, this world that's governed in gross darkness, this Western society known as America, they changed the truth of the Lord into a lie. Right? Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator? That's what they did. They put every man on the pedestal. You understand me? They try to get the base people of the earth to worship and serve the creature more than the creator. To worship and serve the image of men. To serve celebrities. Serve athletes. Serve musicians. Things of that nature. Rather than serving the one and true power, the Lord Almighty, the, the living God, the true God, the God of Israel, right? Who is blessed forever, amen. So you turned the way you turn to your pernicious ways to serve a, a image, right? A idol, serve man, you'll never be blessed forever. Matter of fact, according to Jeremiah chapter... <clears throat> Let me get that better yet. Let me get that. I'm going to pull that scripture real fast. Right? Because we're going to get it. We're going to expose all these lies that's being told in society, in this Western society. You understand? Book of Jeremiah chapter. Book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 5. And it reads... Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. So you a cursed man when you trust in man. You trust in the ways of society to govern you to the light. You trust in, you understand, a man to deliver you when you have to deliver yourself. You have to seek out your own salvation. You understand me? You can't be a respected person. You can't be serving men. Even though I know this is how society has controlled and manipulated your mind. You understand me? You got to turn away from this wickedness, man. This off. They got you bugged out in the head, in the mind. Right? Let me read it again. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man. So you trusting in the man. You trusting in the creature rather than in the creator. So you're going to be cursed. Do you understand? The Lord is blessed forever, amen. You're supposed to be blessed in the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the God of Israel. Blessed be the Most High. The strength and power of Israel whom have uh, uh, given us the strength to continue to endure. Right? Read on. Because it's a wicked thing to put yourself up. 
Alright. We know. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter. Book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 28, and it reads. It's a lot of good one. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he did call, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. So let me read that again. Book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And it reads. It's a lot. And it reads. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So how do you love God? We know how you love God by keeping the commandments. Right? For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Right? So we have to love the most high by keeping his commandments. You understand me? Keeping keeping the oath that our forefathers before us had made you understand me keeping the covenant that our forefathers made with the lord before us you understand me this isn't about us this isn't about us living our best life or whatever the case may be this is about us loving serving serving and loving the lord in truth and sincerity you understand me right and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are the called according to his purpose. So you have to be called according to your purpose. You understand me? If your purpose out here to just be a, a damn harlot or something like that. Or just be a, a damn... I don't know what... You understand? I don't know what your purpose is. But you have to be called according to this. You understand? According to his purpose. Verse 29. For, when, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. So, you understand me? It's a blessed thing to be conformed to the image of the son. You understand me? And that's not, it's not talking about literal. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn amongst many brethren. So, what it's talking about right here, when it says the image of his son, it's not a literal image. It's, it's a spiritual, you understand me, characteristics, aspects. For whom he did foreknew, he, did, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son. So you're going to take on these same mannerisms, these same customs, right? These same traditions as the son of, of the Lord, you understand me? That he might be firstborn amongst many brethren, so that you can shine your light amongst your brethren and bring them back to their heritage, bring them back to their custom, bring them back to that, 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 that inner darkness that's in them. You understand me? Bring them back to the light that it can shine. You understand me, Salaki? I said the inner darkness that's within them, that inner light that's within them. Bring them back to that light that's within them. That, that you understand me? That this Western society have put a put a put a uh, put a lid over. They try to burn out your wick, you understand? Now it's time to, you understand me, light that candle and let that oil drip on out. Right? Verse 30. No, no. Yeah, verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called. And whom he called them, he also justified. And whom he justified them, he also glorified. So you got to understand me. This is a spiritual thing. This was all of the Lord from the beginning. You understand me? So you can't turn away from the Lord. And, you know, you cannot really turn away from the Lord. That's why people, when people be like, oh, he's not in the truth or whatever the case may be. That's foolish right there. You understand? Because you don't know this man. You you don't know what, what this man lot is. You don't know what the Lord plans is for this man. You can't be telling Brother's Day out the truth. You going off right there. Right? Read on. Let's go to the... Let's read on, read on. Go to the book of Matthews real fast. Matthew chapter 
book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse Book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7 and it reads Ask and it shall be given you Seek and ye shall find Knock and it shall be opened unto you For every one that asketh receive it And he that seeketh find it And to him that knocketh it shall be opened Or what man is there of you Whom if his son asks bread Will he give him a stone Meaning what? The Lord with the Lord I'm going to read it again, book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. You know what? I can stop from the top. I'm going to start from the top and work my way down to 7, right? Matter of fact, work my way on down to 8, right? Book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 1, starting at the top, right? And it reads, judge not that ye be not judged, right? For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Meaning what? Don't just be around here trying to condemn the people. You understand me? Trying to condemn them, tell them they're going to get put to death for no reason. Or, you know, they they, they falling out the truth or, or whatever, the, whatever, whatever you're saying out here to the people, right? Don't just be condemning the people for no reason. You understand me? Now, the Lord said... Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1 he said cry aloud spirit not lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins so now with that being said you're supposed to reprove your brother show him their transgression show him their sins now when it says judge not that ye be not judged that means doesn't don't take the matter into your own hand as if you were the most high to condemn this brother or sister to put him to death according to the law to do uh, whatever the law instructed because we're in the time of grace at the moment right now you understand with the Lord's people with you Israelites right we're, we're under grace right now so don't be trying to you understand me stone stone the sister she's an adulterous animal you understand she got time to repent from her wicked ways but don't be trying to put the brother to death because he you understand he might have I don't know he did something off he did some off. You understand? For with what judgment ye judge. Now, listen. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So now if you're telling this brother, okay, brother, you know what I'm saying? You, you got to keep the Sabbath, brother. You understand me? If I catch you, if I catch you shopping on the Sabbath, brother, I'm going to beat your ass. If you tell a brother that or if you're telling a sister that or whatever the case may be. You understand me? And you go out, you catch them shopping, but you got a cart full of groceries and you shopping as well. So what what that mean? Both of y'all gonna get many stripes. You understand me? You and you taking it to your hands to beat this brother or beat this sister ass. What's what's that gonna happen to you? You're gonna be beaten with many stripes as well. You understand me? You're gonna be condemned as well. That's what the scripture's saying. Now, if you're not in a transgression, you can reprove that brother. You understand me? You tell him, look, brother, you know, we, we can't be doing this. We can't be moving like this, right? We got to fear the Lord. You understand me? That's all that's saying. Breaking it down to you just, you know, right? Verse 3, and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? As I said, you can't be going trying to reprove your brother over a transgression that you're in the same transgression of, that's that's foolishness, you understand? You're not going to help this brother because you're not helping yourself. Then the scriptures say, if what can an evil man be good to... And I'm roughly paraphrasing. I forget the scripture. Uh, but it says, uh, a man that is evil to himself cannot, be, cannot do good to others. Roughly paraphrasing. So if this man is... Uh, transgressing the law, statutes, and commandments, and he's telling, advising you to not do so. That's an evil man because he can't even do good to himself, but he's trying to correct you. That's a hypocrite, man. You understand me? So why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in thine own eye? As the saying in the world goes, sweep in front of your door before you try to correct me, before you try to sweep in front of mine. 
in layman's term, deal with your issues before you try to deal with the next brothers or sisters. Meddle not with many men's matters, right? You want to be blameless. Verse 4, or how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull the moat out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Right? Verse 5, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. So you got to deal with your transgressions first and foremost. You shouldn't be out here advising and trying to correct brothers and sisters. If you going off every damn second, every damn day, you understand me? You got to work on yourself first. That way you may build up your family. You understand me? You may build up those that be around you. To hell with trying to teach everybody everything. You can't be everything to everybody if you're not, you understand me? If you're not true, being true to yourself. If you're being a hypocrite. Right? Verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast. Salakia. Verse 6, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pures before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rent you. Right? So verse 6, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. So what? Meaning retain this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that you have. Retain whatever goods that the Lord has given you. You understand? Right? Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your purers before a swine. So don't be giving your godly possessions to the heathen. Don't be giving away these spiritual treasures that the Lord have given you, these spiritual mysteries, these breakdowns to the heathen, because you want to seem like that top guy, that guy with the most knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. The Lord said, don't cast your purers before a swine. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. We know the heathen are referred to dogs. Right? Lest they trample them under their foot, feet, meaning what? They, look, you told them this, but they disregarded it. You understand? And turn again and rent you. And they just using you for folly. You just a joke. You a proverb. You a byword to them. Right? Verse 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find it. Knock. And it shall be opened unto you. Right? For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. So there you have it, man. You got to trust in the Lord. Hey, you doing what the Lord say, you're going to be prosperous with the Lord. You understand me? You ain't going to never fear. You ain't going to fear the, you ain't going to go through, you understand me? You, you may have it a little hard. The Lord going to chastise you, but you might fall a little bit, but you're going to get up. You're going to bounce back. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be tougher. But you got to throw up them prayers. You understand? You can't do this on your own. You can't do this on your own. You need the Lord with you. You need the Most High God, the Abba Nawa. Right? That's when I'm going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. And it reads what? Pray without ceasing. Meaning what? Don't stop your prayer. Be continually praying. You understand me? Continuing strong with the Lord. Pray in the spirit. Pray for the power. Pray for the strength that he shall not depart from you. But that he'll give you full of power, full of majesty. You understand me? In due time. Pray for the endurance. You understand me? So you can endure this great battle. Right? Verse 18. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of the Most High in Christ. Yahweh Shai concerning you. So you give thanks unto the Lord <clears throat> in all things. You understand me? That's how you honor the Lord. Right? Verse 19. Quince not the spirit. Meaning what? Whenever that spirit is, you understand me, advising you to do something, advising you to get nasty with it, meaning what? Advising you to go crazy, read, or advising you to, you understand me, teach your people, advising you to put them on game. Don't hold back from them. Right? Quince not the spirit. Verse 20, despise not prophesying. Right? Verse, um, yeah, I'm going to start right there. Right? Um, uh, 
I'm gonna leave it off with this right here. The book of um, Nah, I'm not gonna end it with that. Okay, here we go. This is the scripture I was looking for. The book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter chapter 1 and verse Salakia. I got a Salakia. Bear with me real quick. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 1 and verse 4, right? And it reads, Wisdom uh, uh, for into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter nor dwell in the body that is subject to sin for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when righteousness cometh in right so there you have it the Lord just gave you the blueprint what well, Solomon Solomon just gave you the blueprint so how do you receive wisdom and who's going to receive wisdom I'm going to read it again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 4. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject to sin. So, into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. What is malicious? What does being malicious mean? Being just a damn demon. Doing everything for the cause of discourse. For the cause of confusion. Just the... Just the just to be a wicked ass demon, basically. You understand me? For to a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter nor dwell in the body that is subject to sin. So if you constantly beating your body up, self-inflicting wounds, right? You constantly going off, you thinking evil thoughts, you meditating on evil, you just just wicked and worldly. What it say, verse five? For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. So all of these wicked thoughts you're thinking of, you're thinking of how to get over on your people, right? How to sell them a lie. Get the hell out of here. Stop playing so much. How to sell them a lie, right? You're thinking of all type of folly and madness. But what the Lord say for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. So if you're not having no understanding, meaning if you're thinking everything, what you see is what you get. If you're just a gullible man, woman, or child, the Lord's going to give you over to that lust. That's what it's saying right here. Right? Remove from thoughts that are without understanding because you're, you're a gullible man. If you think things are what you see, you're deceived. You've been, you've been given knowledge on a base level. Right? And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. So wisdom can't dwell in you. Because you have too much wickedness going on in your vessel, in your mind, in your thoughts, in your heart. You meditate on wickedness. You thinking about your next, your next hit, your next dollar. And it's don't get me wrong, it's nothing about your next dollar. You understand me? But the Lord got everything on his time course. Everything has its time. Everything's gonna be fulfilled in due time. So don't be, don't be, you know, trying to do too much. Right? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 12. Wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her and found of such that seek her. So wisdom will never leave a man. You understand? Wisdom should be a man's first wife. Wisdom is your first wife, your first love. Wisdom, wisdom will never leave a man of understanding. You understand me? 
Wisdom will never leave a man of understanding. Ain't no divorces. Ain't no breaking up. Ain't no see, seeking other women. You understand me? You think you could tell wisdom? Uh, uh, wisdom, baby, you know what? Let me go holler at my other, my, my side piece, uh, Christianity. You can't tell wisdom that. She gonna flee from your vessel. Right? Wisdom is glorious and never faded the way, yet she is easily seen of them that love her and found of such that seek her. So you have to seek out this wisdom. And in these last days, you need to be seeking it out ten times harder. Because wisdom ain't gonna come looking for you. You niggas, all you, if you meditate on wickedness and evil, you don't give wisdom a chance to grow with you. Right? Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail. So if you seeking wisdom right now, right now, don't put her on a back burner. Tell her, look, baby, I'm sorry. I need you to get on that phone and tell wisdom you sorry. Tell wisdom you sorry for forsaking her. You understand me? You sorry for putting, putting them grams in the pot and going crazy, whipping their wrist up. You sorry. Tell wisdom that. Tell wisdom you will never forsake her for these streets again. Tell wisdom you gonna put her at the top of the food chain. Tell wisdom she got now and forever. You understand me? You gotta go hard for wisdom. Because she was there with you when you was conceived. She was in your father's nutsack. You understand me? So you got it. You gotta be there for wisdom. Wisdom wants you to stick it out. Right? Let me read again, Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 12. Wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. Yet she is easily seen of them that love her and find and found of such that seek her. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, for he shall find her sitting at his door. So wisdom was always there with you in the beginning. She gonna be there with you in the end. Wisdom will never despise you if you're a man of understanding, a man of learning, a man of renown. So seek her while she may be found. And you understand me? Live, live your best life with wisdom. Because wisdom is your best, best life. You understand me? Right? One more. I'm going to leave you with one more. The book of Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 51 and verse 13. When I was young or ever I went abroad, I desired wisdom openly in my prayer. So with that being said, I'm going to give all glory and honor to the Abba Yahweh. I'm going to say the water you have for another uh, glorious lesson. May the most high God bless you, brothers, sisters, and children, and to uh, endure your share, right? That you may have the strength and power of the Lord upon you in the time of affliction that you may be able to endure and get through all things. So yet again, I'm going to say the water you have, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh, the water all praises in my mouth.